Uh, good morning. Uh, it truly is a pleasure uh, to stand before you today. Uh, I'm truly humbled and honored, uh, feel incredibly blessed, and just have to really, first and foremost, thank God for this opportunity, uh, the way this had come about, and to stand before you today. Uh, I'm, I'm just speechless, and to have an opportunity uh, to lead the Big Ten Conference and follow in the shoes of Jim Delaney is truly an honor. Uh, it will definitely be a challenge, but my entire life has been about challenges and overcoming challenges, and I am so happy and just overwhelmed to stand before you today. Now, what Jim Delaney accomplished during his time here, uh, the creative things that he's done, the way he's taken this conference to certain heights is truly special. I've had an opportunity to meet a lot of the staff here at the Big Ten. One thing I'll say, uh, they really are special, special people. They have a great energy about it. I go about how I feel when I meet someone, and uh, it's been a pleasure this morning. And so I look really forward to working with everyone who I've met and, and those who I, I will meet. And uh, President uh, McRobbie from Indiana has become very special. And again, I just knew the first time that I had a chance to meet with him that I said uh, he's a man of integrity, of high character, uh, loves this conference, loves his university, but will always do the right things. And so for that, President, I really appreciate everything you and also your colleagues, the other presidents and chancellors of the Big Ten. This is a really special group. And as I sit here today, there are so many people. I could talk for two hours of the many people who have helped me along this journey. So many people. But as I thought through it this morning, there are certain people that came to mind. I mean, just to think back, uh, Mike Slive, the former commissioner of the Great Midwest Conference and the SEC. And I remember in early 1990, I had a friend, a mutual friend of Mike and, and mine, arrange a meeting for us to meet, ironically, downtown Chicago, ironically, right near the Palmer House, where the Big Ten was established back in 1895. And I had a chance to talk with Mike, and it was really about college athletics and sports and my love of college athletics and sports. And after that meeting, it was more of an educational meeting. By the time I drove my uh, car back to South Bend, Indiana, he had left a voicemail on my answer machine. When I tell my kids that, they say, answer machine, what's that? Um, <laughs> But he left a voicemail to say, there's something about you, and I want you to join my team. And so I joined his team as a lawyer. So I started my career off working on NCAA infractions cases. But the thing that I learned from Mike Slive is the importance of hard work, attention to detail, integrity, and the love for college athletics. I think about Dick Vermeil, the coach of the St. Louis Rams, who gave me my first opportunity in 1997 at the Rams. Again, I talked to him last night, had an emotional conversation. I wish I could have talked to Mike Slive. He passed last year. But I did talk to his daughter, Anna, this morning, and I told her how much I love her, her mother, and how much I loved her father, and that I would be so honored to work in college athletics because he taught me so much. Coach Vermeil. Last night, we had an emotional conversation. And I just thanked him for this opportunity, for what he has done for me in my career as a second father. He was there every step of the way. And he taught me about hard work, but he also taught me about loyalty. He taught me about people. And he taught me about culture. And for that, I will always be thankful. I'd like to thank the people at the NFL. They've been my family for the last 21 years. People in the league office, people around the various teams, Commissioner Roger Goodell has been a mentor and a dear friend. The Will family are owners of the Vikings. We've had an interesting journey these last 16 years to be able to work hand in hand with them. And for that, I will always be appreciative. And my former colleagues in Minnesota, we have a great group of people there, talented, wonderful. Uh, it has really been special to spend the last 15 years of my life with them. And then there's some people here today who I would just like to personally thank. Mae Davis, who's uh, been with me 
literally as an executive uh, assistant for 29 years. And uh, she can tell you some stories. Um, and we've been together. And for that, I really appreciate that. Emily Bombach, who works with me now the last couple uh, years and has really done a good job of keeping my life you know, organized. My dear friend, Selwyn Vickers, who we prayed together on the phone together this morning. Uh, he's a prayer warrior, along with Tom Lanfear and Pastor Vera. And my dear friend, Jim Stapleton, who also loves the Big Ten uh, deeply. My nephew, Morrison, uh, he's a lawyer here in Chicago at Chapman and Cutler. We grew up together, we, we cried together, we fought each other, but uh, we've been there for each other for every step of the way. And his daughter, Sarah Warren, was an um, Olympic uh, speed skater, training now, but was a soccer player at the University of Illinois. And I appreciate Morrison so much, more than uh, he'll, he'll ever know. But thank you for being there always. And then my daughter, Perry, uh, who's been the love of my life uh, since she was born, she just graduated from Occidental College, cum laude, a couple weeks ago and get a chance to spend time with her. My son, Powers, um, and this is what student athletes and what college athletics is about. He was supposed to be here today, but he's a football student athlete at Mississippi State University in Starkville. And he called my wife and I yesterday and said, Mom and Dad, I really want to be there with you all, but I started summer school yesterday I have a test on Friday, and I have workouts tomorrow. And I need to get ready for the season, and I need to do well on this test. And so if you wonder what athletics, what college athletics can do for a young person to help them grow and to be responsible and to understand what it means to give back, my son epitomized that yesterday for him to stay there and go to class today to prepare for a test on Friday and train with his teammates today. And then my wife, Greta, as you know, anyone who gets an opportunity to stand before a podium like this does not do it alone. And I can argue she deserves more credit than I do because she has kept everything together at home for the last 27 years, from kids to dogs to schedules to my crazy schedule, to all of the different logistics that go into running a household. And for that, our 27th anniversary is two days from now. I just want to thank her and tell her how much I appreciate her. I think about my parents. And I wish they could be here. Because today is a day that they told me about that would come. They said days like today will come. They may not come when you're ready. They may not come when you want them to come. But they will come when the time is right. And they told me that if you work hard, you leave every situation better than it was when you arrived. You keep your word. You do the best job you possibly can. You attach yourself with good people. You get a good education. You be a student athlete. That you will get an opportunity to have days like today. And for that, mom and dad, I just want to thank you for reminding me to always take the long road, to not take shortcuts. And you were right. And I'll tell you that I'm glad this opportunity took as long as it did for me to stand before you today. Standing before you today has not been easy. It probably started 44 years ago as an 11-year-old kid. As an 11-year-old kid, I was happy-go-lucky. I loved life. I loved my family. I loved sports. I loved to play. I loved to eat. I loved to watch TV. I'd love to act like I brushed my teeth when I didn't. I'd love to not make up my bed until that one summer day when I got on my bike to go to the local school to have fun with friends, and I was run over by a car. And as I laid on that ground, 
and I heard all the things that the paramedics were saying about that I might not make it, and then traveling in an ambulance, and then the fun began for them to put me in traction for weeks and months. And I thought the fun was ready to end then until the doctor told me that we were going to need to put you in a body cast and to spend many, many, many days and nights wondering if I'd ever walk again. They told me I would never play sports again if I would ever have an opportunity to be a normal kid. Well, during my exit meeting with the doctor, and I've learned over life, that sometimes people who may not even believe in you and who don't know your internal constitution and what you stand for, the doctor said some words to me that I wish I could contact him today and thank him, because he told me your chance of walking, not good. Your chance of sports, really not good. And so I asked the question as an 11-year-old boy, scared, frightened, had never been through that much pain in my life. The pain would be so searing that I could feel it in my teeth. I would ask him, even though you don't believe that I can get back to where I was, what would give me the best chance? And he told me, you need to swim. So I asked my parents, would they put a pool in our backyard so I could swim? My mom and dad looked at me and said, Kevin, we would love to. We don't have the financial resources to do that. And so I came up with the novel idea, and that's probably what I figured out. I'd probably be a good lawyer one day. I told my parents, I said, didn't I get a $30,000 settlement from the accident? They said, yes. I said, I want to pay for the pool in our backyard. So I spent $11,000 to build a pool in our backyard. And I swam in the morning. I swam after school. I swam at night. Morrison and I, he was the best Mar Marco Polo player I've ever been around. <laughs> and I finally figured out later is that he would move, we, he would move the, the towel uh, in the goggles to the side so he could see. So that's how he would catch me. <laughs> I figured that out. But we swam and played and worked out so much in that pool that six years after my accident, I was able to lace up some red Nike shoes and walk on the court at the Palestra in Philadelphia as a Division I NCAA student athlete. And what I learned from that journey, that in life, most of the times when you accomplish great things, you've got to build your own pool. You've got to be willing to pay for it. You've got to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to dedicate yourselves to being great. Sometimes it's lonely, lonely, sometimes it's complicated, but it's great. And so as I stand here today as a new leader of this conference, thinking about what Jim Delaney accomplished, thinking about what this staff in here has accomplished, our 5.7 million alumni around the world, 9,600 student athletes, I promise you that I'm going to do everything possibly to make sure we create an environment for our student athletes here to empower them, to embrace them, to educate them, to make them the people and to give them the experiences that they need, not only while they're here playing in the Big Ten, but when they graduate. I'm going to create an environment for us to embrace our fans, just like Jim has done. Make sure we're strong financially and to build relationships, not only here internally with the staff, but around college athletics and in our community. So again, I would just like to thank everyone for coming out today. I thank you for your support. I ask for your prayers. And I'm so happy that we're able to join hands today to make an already phenomenal and fantastic conference, the Big Ten Conference, to come together, to pull together, to even to make it a little bit better. 
I'm ready for the challenge. I'm excited. I'm energized. But most of all, I'm grateful. And to work alongside people like Diane, I look forward to that. There's so many good people here who have taken care of me the last 48 hours. And I'll close with this, as my mom would always say, if you want to learn about a person, spend 48 hours with them. I've spent 48 hours with people in this room, and President McRobbie, and I'll tell you this, I'm ecstatic to be here, and I can't wait to go to work. Thank you, and God bless you. Both Kevin and President McRobbie are available for your questions. Just a reminder to please state your name and outlet before you ask your question. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, uh, spent most of the last two decades at the professional level. What was it about this job that made you want to take a ri not risk, but to take a leap and, and do something different? I think one of the things I've learned in my career is the fact that there are certain constants in all industries. It's people, it's communication, it's leadership, it's culture. So yeah, I've spent the last 21 years in professional sports, but when you look at the last 21 years, the fortunate thing I've been able to do is deal with some very complex situations. Um, and, and so I feel excited and I, I strongly believe that my skill set, one innately being a student athlete. And I look back over my family, you know, my father was a student athlete in the 40s. My brother was a student athlete in the 60s. I was a student athlete. I have a son who's a student athlete now. That I understand the issues associated with it. I understand business. Uh, but most of all, I understand relationships. And I understand legacy. And this conference has an unbelievable legacy. And uh, I'm excited. I'm a life learner. And I'm excited about coming here and learning as much as I possibly can. Uh, to con continually make this conference as special as it already is. Uh, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN.com. Congratulations. Yes. How are you doing? Um, so uh, the idea of coming to a college athletics mm -hmm. position, though, w was that on your radar? Did you think maybe this is my next move, or would it be likelier to stay in the NFL as you sort of mapped out your next uh, career move? You know, one thing I've, I found out, and I said, again, I say that my life began at the accident is that I, I realize that I, I take every single day as an opportunity to get better. I know one of the things that I love, I love college athletics. And I'll tell you, there's nothing better than a college athletic atmosphere. You know, women's softball game, you know, hockey game, football, basketball, the Olympic sports. It's a special environment. And to be in this opportunity, for, to be able to meld my business background, my legal background, my love for college athletics, my love for young people, my love for empowering young people, to be able to meld that and bring that all together in this conference, in this location, with these people, I mean, this is, this is the, the best opportunity for me at this point in time in my life. Matt Brown, SBNation.com. Yes. Um, for a lot of our readers, Jim Delaney has been the only commissioner of the Big Ten that many of them have ever known. Right. So I'm wondering if they're either through leadership style or on matters of any particular policy, can you think of any, anything where you already know that you're going to be different from what you know, fans have, have seen over the last several years? I've made it very clear. When you have an iconic leader like Jim Delaney, the worst thing you can do is to go and try to tear down what, he, what he's built and what the staff has built. And so I think one of the things that I will focus on is making sure I take the time and energy to be a great listener and a great observer, to take what he's built, to take what our presidents and chancellors have built, to take what this staff has built, to take what our student athletes have built, to really understand that and then to build on top of that. And I learned something early on, especially all the construction that we've done in Minnesota, U.S. Bank Stadium, is that the higher you build in the building, the lower you have to go in the ground. 
to make sure the foundation is steady. So this has a very steady and sturdy foundation, which is great. Uh, it's been an unbelievable conference. And so I'm excited to be able to listen and learn and to work with some fine people and, and you know, follow what Jim has done. Everyone's different. I'm sure I'll have a different style, but I know that there are certain innate and fundamental characteristics that, that, that we will be the same on. And that's the love of this conference, the respect for the presidents and chancellors, the respect for the student athletes and the athletic administrator, uh, administration, the love for our fans. Um, and so I think all of those, those attributes that Jim has, of being a hard worker and, and working together and collaborative and a visionary is, is what I, I have a lot of those same attributes. And so I'm looking forward to taking everything that this conference stands for and then continue, continuing to do what I can to make it even better. Yes. Kevin, uh, congratulations. Adam Thank Hope you. from WGN here in Chicago. Thank you. Uh, is there anything you point to specifically from your time in the NFL with the Vikings, any accomplishments uh, that you were able to get done that you think specifically translate to, to this job? I think, again, it comes down to not only the end goal of the accomplishments, but it's more of the, the mental process of the accomplishments. So there's so many things. I mean, first of all, it wasn't me alone. I work with some phenomenal individuals. But to think, uh, you know, when I joined the Vikings, we had 92 employees, now to be at 225 employees. As President McRobbie said, we were last in revenues and to look what we've accomplished to where we've grown. You know, to build the largest construction project in the history of the state of Minnesota on time and early. To be building a 200 acre development. Some of the issues off the field we've had to work through. But not only that internally, I think the, the thing, I mean, when I was promoted to CO in 2015, I restructured the entire organization, promoted people, empowered women. I mean, we now have multiple women vice presidents in key positions in legal and finance and partnership activation and HR. Um, we started a, 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 a program called ILRP, an Innovative Leadership Rotational Program, where we give young people who normally don't get a chance to get into sports a chance to, to work, uh, working on a Gen Z platform. I mean, there are so many things, what we've done in data analytics. And I think people will tell you around professional sports in the league, from the league office to the individual teams, that we are known as a franchise that has been very forward-thinking, cutting-edge, uh, hard-working, collaborative. And the thing that I, I appreciate most about my time in Minnesota is that the people are really decent, good people, that you can have success and be a good person. And so there's so many things that we've accomplished collectively as an organization, so many people that I've worked for. And so I think all those skills translate and transfer right to where we are. I mean, you think about where we are in college athletics. You think about what the next 5 to 10 to 15 years look like. And when I accepted this job, I didn't look at it as this is a, a today job. I looked at this as a long-term job, and the thing that was exciting to me was the, all the wonderful issues that we're going to have to tackle together that we'll be able to look back and say, do you remember back in 2019 when we had this, 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 this? And to look back and say, we not only solved it, but we did a phenomenal job in solving it, and we did it with style, grace, and class. So I think the skills transfer very easy. Andy Seligman, AP. Um, congratulations, first of all. Thank and you. second, um, you're going to, to obviously be the first black commissioner of a Power Five conference. Um, do you see yourself as a pioneer? And what, what do you make of that in general? I mean, it's, uh, it is definitely not lost on me of, of the history associated with this. I have some key pictures on my wall that I look at every single day, thanks to my wife, is I have a picture of Kurt Flood, who was an African-American pioneer in baseball, who, who really stood up uh, about baseball free agency. A lot of people, when I see wearing their Kurt Flood jerseys, I always ask them, do you know the historical significance about that? But I have a picture of Kurt Flood. I have a picture right in front of my desk of Jackie Robinson. I have a picture behind me of Dr. King. I have a picture of the 1966 Texas Western basketball team, first time five black student athletes won a national championship when they beat Kentucky. So I have all those pictures in my office. I have a, the, um, Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail that was a gift to me from Dr. Selwyn Vickers. So I have a lot of historical significance. One good thing about uh, what I've been through, you know, being the first black CEO in the history of the NFL, 
there's been a lot of first uh, in my family, starting with my mother and father, but uh, with me, so I'm comfortable in this skin. But I, I think what it says is not only about color, what it says, and I am just appreciate the opportunity, it's really about diversity, about inclusion, and it really is about opportunity. And one of the things I will stand for here is to make sure, regardless of your background, regardless of your race, color, creed, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, this will be a place from an inclusive standpoint that we will embrace everyone and give everyone an opportunity to be the best they can be. And so, yes, is it from a historical standpoint important? Do I think about it every single day? Yes, but I also remember it provides me with an opportunity to make sure that I send the elevator back down to, to give people uh, who other people may not have given an opportunity, people who look like me, to remember that and to make sure that I perform at the highest possible level to open up the door for the next person, regardless of their color, but even, even though they may be a little bit different, but they'll, they'll be given a chance in the future to realize their dreams like I have been able to. Yes, sir. Matt Portuna of The Athletic. I'm curious, this job opened up and you said that's something I might be interested. Were you business as usual and they contacted you? What can you share about how this kind of came together? Yeah, well, one, one thing about you know, my life, I'm in an in the moment person. And um, so I'm not one of those people that's constantly on the, you know, I have some friends who keep me up to speed who are literally almost keep a, like a rolling list of the different jobs that are open. And, um, but when, when I was contacted and it did open up, you know, they're, they're only, and I make it very clear, and I stand before you today to tell you this, there are only a couple places that I would ever consider spending, you know, the next major portion of my life and my career. And this is number one on my list. So this is not about a job. This is really about an opportunity for a legacy. And that's why this, this opportunity made sense at this time, because this is what I call one of those legacy opportunities. And that's why I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored and I'm just excited to, to go to work. So, you know, I'm one of those people, I don't have an agent. I never have, I do all my work. I'm not in the job market, but when an opportunity like this presents itself, especially, I mean, you know, Jim's been here for, like you said, 30 years. I mean, people around, in and around the Big Ten, he's the only person that they've ever known. And to think, you're talking about five commissioners in almost 125 years, I mean, that truly is amazing. So these things don't open up often, and I hope that I perform at such a high level that I can be here, you know, again for the next 20, and if my wife lets me, 30 more years, too. <laughs> I'll be a happy person if I'm here 30 years from now. Yes, sir. Hi, Ed Sherman. Um, yes. Just curious about um, your, uh, how you're going to reflect on your perspective as a student athlete and what that will bring to this job and kind of what you know about how it's changed since you've, uh, you've been a student athlete. That's a great question. I mean, one of the things that you know, I realize, and, and there are a lot of student athletes in, the, in this building and, and in our fine universities in the Big Ten, is the, is the fact that you know, athletics has an interesting way of breaking down walls, getting people to talk to each other who ordinarily would not talk to, to each other. And so as I reflect on my time as a student athlete, although the equipment has evolved and some, there have been some rules changes, but at the end of the day, it's about a group of men young men, it's about a group of women, young women, coming together to learn how to be coached, to be there as a support system, to work hard, to persevere, to get up when you've been knocked down before. So although the game may look like that his has changed, which it has, it has evolved for the better, the core tenets of, of what it means to be a student athlete are really relevant. And one of the things I think I'll bring, uh, just like Jim brought, because he had a great athletic career, is the fact of understanding that this serves as hope for our current student athletes. That, that if you go to college and work hard academically and get a good education and be a, a fair person, whatever field you choose, and work hard, that great opportunities will, will, will arise. And I think the students that we have in the Big Ten, they, they are students first. And that's one of the things that I think we want to make sure that we keep in mind. I've always been a big believer in being a student athlete, not an athlete athlete or an athlete student, but to be a student athlete. And one of the things that we need to do, which has been done, 
is to continually embrace that notion that colleges and universities have been put here uh, to educate people and to keep that in mind. And it's wonderful to have the athletic playing field come into play with it. So I just think that the fundamental tenets of what you learn on a team or as in an individual sport or whether you're a football player or women's or men's basketball player or an Olympic sport athlete, that what you learn through athletics is that you cannot put a dollar value on. And that's what I'm excited to figure out ways to even elevate that experience for our student athletes. Yes. What are your thoughts on compensating athletes or extending the value of scholarships going forward? It's a big topic in, in, in the industry, right? And that's now. a big topic I've thought about. And, and I will say this, that at the appropriate time, you know, when we can have some time to sit down, I would love to kind of share my thoughts with you uh, to talk in the details, you know, about it. This is a, um, a great time in college athletics, and there's a, many issues, that being one of them, that uh, we're going to need to address. There have been um, committees put into place to, to address those issues, and I'm looking forward that once I'm here full time and can sit down and talk about it, that, that then I can share my, my personal thoughts in regards to those, those issues. Maybe a similar answer, but on the you were talking earlier about future, um, the future landscape of college sports. One of those big topics also is the possible expansion of college football playoff. You come from a league with perhaps the most successful playoff there is. Uh, do you have any initial thoughts on on that topic and and if it should go beyond four teams? Again, I think similar. Um, you know, this is one of those things. As I said earlier, I'm I'm one thing I'm really excited about these next three to four months to the next to time, especially I get a chance to spend with Jim and the staff here and my other constituents, is to really kind of just listen and learn. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, I love learning. I'm constantly, you know, reading and talking and understanding. And so this is one of those issues that I have on, on my list that, that we'll definitely need to sit down and learn and really study and, and figure out what's the best thing for the game, what's the best thing for this conference. And so I look forward at the appropriate time to be able to, to share all those thoughts with you, but to really to learn about what's the right thing to do. And, um, and that's what makes this opportunity so exciting because we do have some, some issues that we need to, to learn about. Thanks. Um, thank, on that note, um, I imagine your perspective as somebody that hasn't been working in college athletics for a long time would, would be really valuable. Are there other issues that you know just from watching this conference or watching this, you know, c college athletics as a whole from far that you that you know at this point, hey, this also is on my list. I know that this is, this is something we're going to have to talk about pretty soon. Well, I, I think when we say talk about pretty soon, one of the things that I know that's important and the reason why I know it specifically is because, you know, we have my daughter was an athlete and our son is currently an athlete. I think I have a good feel and understanding um, about what young people, especially young student athletes, because keep in mind, in the NFL, you know, we get a chance to get the, the product, you know, from college. And one thing about the NFL, because it's so pressurized, there's so much money involved, uh, there's so much visibility, you know, pressure uh, uh, forces people or puts people in positions where the kind of the real person kind of comes out. So I know one of the areas that I would love to explore more and address just to make sure that we're creating an environment that's a holistic environment for our student athletes, for them to, to learn, to get a great education, uh, but also to have the resources that they need to make sure that they can be young people. And, and when they do face issues, personal issues, that they're not embarrassed about it, that they have resources to be able to, to address those and to be able to get better as people. And so I'm one of those individuals because I've been there too as a student athlete and I've been there as a person who had to endure many, many painful nights uh, in hospital beds and even at home. So I understand uh, the complexities associated with making sure that you have to have your mind right and to have people that you can talk to and share things with and, and create an environment so we can create that holistic person who not only will be successful while they're on the university but also for you know, 50, 60, 70 years after they graduate from our institutions. Yes, ma'am. To go back to your mission of diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. what are your ideas and plans on how you would diversify the Big Ten coaching ranks and leadership positions? I mean, I think one of the things that's always important is just by even talking about it, you know, to be able to talk about it. 
and uh, and to clarify what we mean from you know diversity and inclusion. It's you know that's gender, that's color, this. And I'm big in the opportunities. It takes opportunities. It takes people to believe in you, to give you an opportunity. And that's all I've ever asked my entire life. I've never wanted anything. I like things that are meritocracies, where you give people a chance. And some fail, some succeed. But to give people a chance. But I think even having these conversations, having summits to address issues gender-related issues in sports, race-related issues in sports. You know, fortunately, we're at a time in our country right now where we're starting to become a little bit more comfortable to talk about some of these issues that we would only talk about at our dining room table. But I would love to create an environment from a positive, holistic standpoint that we can talk about race and gender and, you know, all those different issues in sports that we haven't talked about. But because of the nature and the, just the, the fiber of the Big Ten is that I think we're, we're the conference that is in a position that we can bring thought leaders together from around the country, from around the world to talk about these different issues. And so I just think by one, uh, addressing these issues, um, talking about it, and, and I'm, 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 I'm very confident that over time that we will, we will see continuous improvement at all levels, in all situations to give people uh, with diverse backgrounds, diverse thinking processes, a chance to, to administer, to, to coach, uh, to be leaders, even from a player standpoint. So that's one of the areas that I'm passionate about and I think it's necessary for the game and I look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah.